You know, as a gardener, it's just amazing what you can do with a hot glue gun. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, this board right here displays a lot of different plant diseases and problems that gardeners bring into the OSU Extension Office. And our master gardener, Betty Patterson, used her hot glue gun to glue these problems to this board and label them with some computer printouts so gardeners could see evidence of problems that they may bring into the office, even if they don't have a sample. One thing I wanted to visit with you about today are plant galls. Now, normally you don't see these except during the growing season. But if you're out in your garden this winter and looking at branches of trees, you may be seeing evidence of some galls. Now, galls are unusual vegetative growths on plants. They can be found on stems, twigs, leaves. They're usually caused by either bacteria, viruses, fungi, caused by insects. Even nematodes can cause galls. But all in all, they're just unusual vegetative growth. This first one I want to show you is crown gall. It's caused by bacterium, and it was found on an apple tree that a gardener brought in. They wondered what it was. And really, once you see that on a plant, there's not much you can do about it. Usually, it comes in on the nursery stock, and we'll generally first notice it around the graft line of trees. And usually, all, that all you can do is let the tree live with it. Some people try to cut out the gall, but sometimes that can cause far more harm than good. Mounted on the board here are some oak galls that you'll commonly find. The very first one here is a vein pocket gall that was found on an oak leaf. And you can see along the veins, there's a swollen, raised up area. And it usually causes alarm in most gardeners, but it's really not very harmful. This is um, another gall caused by a gall wasp that's found on oaks. Another one down here is a woolly type of gall caused by the same little wasp. And the reason you see this is that the, the wasp has laid its eggs or fed upon the leaf and the leaf responds by growing strange tissue up around that. And so it's really just plant tissue that you're looking at that looks strange. And this one right here is another gall caused by a gall wasp, and it's found along the limbs of oak trees. And you'll see these commonly in the wintertime, especially on pin oaks. Now, none of these are ones that you really need to be very concerned about. Uh, if galls are real bad on a tree, usually the tree has other problems as well, such as secondary fungi coming in. It might be weakened from old age. At the OSU Extension Office, we generally don't recommend spraying trees to control galls. Once you see the damage like this, there's nothing you can spray to make it go away. You can prevent galls by following our ornamental home insect control guide. There are some sprays you can put on, but for the most part, um, you can generally live with them, and so can the plants. Now, right here's another gall you might be interested in. This is hackberry nipple gall. And again, it's caused by a little insect that has left a sting mark on the leaf, and then the leaf tissue grew up around it. Over here is one that pecan growers commonly find on pecan leaves. It's called pecan phylloxera gall. And there's a little phylloxera. It's an insect related to aphids that causes this gall swelling. And growers usually spray to prevent this problem because it can eventually, if it surrounds the whole leaf, it can cause that leaf to die. Up here, is not a gall, but it's an unusual vegetative growth. This is what we call fasciation, and it's caused by a virus. This is an apple twig that a gardener brought in, and it has a very curly cue, flattened growth. The virus usually makes it grow very strangely. In fact, sometimes it'll cause one branch of an apple tree to bear dozens of apples in one location. In fact, a, a man up in Inola, Oklahoma, brought this to my attention last year. Anyway, as you see samples that interest you in your garden, you might bring them to your extension office. They can sure use them to help other gardeners as well. But if you see plant balls around your garden, don't get too alarmed.